Hey, boys and girls, my name is Mac Comer. I'm Knoxville, Tennessee's Dean of Fun, and today I'm going to read you a book titled, What Do Animals Need? And it's written by Margaret McNamara. Now, while I'm reading, you're going to see this arrow floating across the screen, and that's just so that you can follow along while I read. Let's get started. What do animals need? Pictures to think about. Look at this picture. What does this picture make you think about? When I put my finger on my head, that means I'm giving you a chance to think. So what does this picture make you think about? Well, this picture makes me think about a giraffe who is maybe very thirsty. Why? Because, well, the giraffe is drinking out of a little tiny pond. How about this picture? What does this picture make you think about? This picture makes me think about speed. Because it looks like this animal is running super fast. Maybe hunting. What does this picture make you think about? Hmm, this picture, for some reason, makes me think about discovery. Like, um, for example, like when a mole emerges to the surface for the first time from the underground world. It might mean something different to you. Anyways, let's go ahead and read What Do Animals Need by Margaret McNamara. Now, the table of contents are going to tell us um, what the sections are in the book and what page they start on. So words to think about on page two, introduction on page four, chapter one, animals need food and water, page six, chapter two, animals need oxygen, page eight, chapter three, animals need shelter, page 10, chapter four, animals need space, page 12, the conclusion is on page 14, and the glossary and index are on page 16. Okay, so words to think about. The first word is energy. This cheetah uses energy to run. Grow. You want to say that word? Grow. A baby elephant will grow to become an adult. Need. These warthogs need water to live. Shelter. This raccoon uses the tree for shelter. Space. These giraffes have space or room to run. And then the last word, survive. This frog eats insects to survive or stay alive. Introduction. Animals need many things to survive or stay alive. What do you think happens to animals that do not get the things they need? Here we have pictures of giraffes. This is a zebra, a leopard, an ermine, and this is a fish and a bear. So what do you think happens to animals that do not get things that they need in order to live? You know what? I'm not going to answer that question because I bet you we can find the answer in this book. Chapter 1 is on page 6 and page 7. Animals need food and water. All animals, including you, need food and water to grow. Animals get energy from the food they eat. Most of an animal's body is water. In order to stay alive, animals find ways to get the food and water that they need. So look at this picture and it says, This hawk uses its talons to catch fish. Its talons would be those claws. They're super sharp. This picture says, This tiger uses its sharp teeth to get food. Look at those sharp teeth. Woo! They're big. This elephant eats leaves to get energy. And if you, close, if you look closely, you can see some green stuff here. And this deer drinks water to survive. Right here it says, Think about it. Herbivores are animals that eat plants. 
Carnivores are animals that eat other animals. Omnivores eat both plants and animals. Are you an herbivore, carnivore, or omnivore? Well, I am an omnivore because I eat both plants and animals. For example, chicken, maybe with a side of broccoli. All right, we're on pages eight and nine. Chapter two, animals need oxygen. Take a deep breath of air. You just took oxygen into your body. Living things use oxygen to get energy and to survive. Some animals get oxygen from the air. Some animals that live in water get oxygen from the water. Look at this picture. These bison breathe oxygen from the air. Now look at this picture. This coral trout gets oxygen from the water. This fish uses its gills. So one difference between us, uh, us mammals and fish is mammals use lungs. That's what we have in our chest. When you breathe in, your lungs fill up with air. But fish use the gills. The gills kind of, um, they let the water flow through and they, they collect the oxygen. This orca breathes through its blowhole. Here's a question. If the orca is breathing through its blowhole, would it be a mammal or would it be a fish? Well, you know, it's funny. A lot of people would think an orca would maybe be a fish because it lives in the water and it has a fin and it, you know, has a flipper tail. But it's actually a, <clears throat> it's actually a mammal because it breathes the air, it's warm-blooded, and it has live babies that drink milk from it, just like all mammals do. Chapter 3. Animals need shelter. Animals need shelter just like you do. Some animals find shelter. Other animals build shelter. A shelter is a safe place for an animal to live. If the weather is too hot or cold, then animals can protect themselves in their shelters. Kind of like me and you. If it's cold outside, we might stay in the house. But if it's really hot outside, we might actually stay in the house too if we have air conditioning. This ground agama uses an underground shelter for protection. This raccoon finds shelter in a tree. This robin uses sticks, mud, and grass to build a nest. And this clownfish finds shelter in an anemo. Cause and effect. Look at the word if. This is the word that helps us understand the cause. What word helps us understand the effect? So here we go. If the weather is too hot or cold, then animals can protect themselves in their shelters. So if helps us understand the cause, the word then helps us understand the effect. So if this happens, then this happens. Chapter 4. Animals need space. Animals need space or room in which to move around. If animals do not have space, then they might not find enough food and water. Animals protect their space. What do you do when someone gets too close to you? How can animals find the space they need? And look at this picture. These wild horses like to run. They need a lot of open space. If they were kept in a small little pen, they wouldn't be healthy because they need a lot of room to run in order to be healthy and have strong muscles. Right here, ants need space too. Ants find space in the soil. So you won't see, like ants, they dig their own little tunnels and stuff, but they do that so they can have their own space. Ants have colonies, which is kind of like a giant family, but... Uh, Families don't really mix well with other families, so they like to have their own space. These apes make loud noises to protect their space. So if you go close to one of these apes, you might hear, hoo, 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 or something like that. Um, maybe not that, that exact sound, but you're going to hear something, and it's to let you know, hey, bud, back off. This is my space. Go somewhere else. 
Conclusion. In order to survive, animals need five things. Animals need water, food, and oxygen give animals energy. Animals need shelter to stay safe. They also need space. If an animal does not have these five things, what will happen? And here it says animals need five things to survive. Food, that bear's eating the fish. Water, that horse is having a drink. Oxygen, this bird is up in the air. I think that's a hawk. Shelter, this polar bear cub is in its little cub den in the snow. And space, these bison are spread out in the fields so that they can get enough grass to survive. The glossary. Now this usually comes at the end of a book and it's going to have some vocabulary words and the definitions for those words. Definition is going to tell you what did that word mean. Okay, So the word energy means the ability to do work. It says see page 6. So if you go to page 6, you'll learn about energy. Grow. To become larger and stronger. See page 6. Need. Must have. So when you need something, it means you must have something. See page 4. Shelter. A safe place. See page 10. Space. Room to move around. See page 12. Survive. To stay alive. See page 4. Underneath this glossary is the index. The index is also going to have important words that come up in the book. It's not going to tell you the definition, but it is going to tell you the page number that you can find out more information about that word or topic. For example, animals, you'll find that on pages 4, 6, and 9. Energy can be found on pages 6, 8, and 14. Food can be found on pages 6, 12, and 14. Grow can be found on page 6. Um, if you want to find out about need, you can look on pages 4, 6, 10, and 12. Shelter on pages 10 and 15. Space on pages 12 and 15. Survive on pages 4, 8, and 14. And water on four pages, 6, 9, 12, and 14. Okay, so we're done with our book. Let's just read this last page, though. It talks about zoologists. A zoologist is a scientist who studies animals. Zoologists want to know how animals act, sleep, and eat. Some animals are endangered, and zoologists help protect them. Endangered means that they are um, close to being extinct, and when you are extinct, that means you no longer live on this planet, kind of like the dinosaurs. Zoologists study how animals, how animal bodies look and work, and how animals grow and change. Many people study zoology. Veterinarians study zoology. They help keep animals healthy. You might call a veterinarian a vet for short, and that's the place where you might take your dog or cat when they're sick or they need their shots. So, why are zoologists important? Let's think about that for a second. Well, zoologists are important for a number of reasons. We just read about that. It says they help endangered animals. They find out more information about how animals act, sleep, and eat. Um, also, veterinarians, the people that help your animals when they're sick and stuff like that, they study zoology, okay? Um, zoologists also study animal bodies and how they look and grow and how they work in general. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed reading this book with me as much as I enjoyed reading it with you. Until next time, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.